Let's look at the results. First, Angrist is going to split his analysis by whites, with the results up here, and non-whites, with the results down here. Next, he's going to look at three parts of your life. The year immediately after you applied, which he labels during service, then transition years, a few years later, and then finally, after you've left the military, if you had joined, right here, which he calls after service. Furthermore, he's going to look at two different outcome variables. How much money you actually make, which we saw in the previous graph, which he labels earnings, and then whether you are employed or not, which he labels employment. So finally, he's going to, have to look at five different ways of computing the effect of military service on um, your earnings or whether you're employed, which are given in each of these five columns. We're going to ignore these two columns here. OK, so in the first column, he labels the difference in means. This is what we saw in the previous graph. This is just you take your two groups of people, okay, four whites, who applied in 1982. You've got two groups, the ones who enlisted in the military and the ones who didn't. And then you look at their, the earnings of those two groups, take the difference, that's what you've got here. So here we see exactly what we saw in the previous graph. People who en enlisted in the military make more money. The difference is positive. So after service, they make about $1,200 more than the people who didn't enlist in the military. Same thing is true for non-whites, although they make significantly more um, compared to whites than if they join the military. So about $2,500 more after they've, they've left the service. So that's just the difference in means. And we already know that we might be worried about the selection problem, and these are not actually causal effects. So following Angrist's uh, identification strategy, he's going to use matching or regression to control for other variables that might affect your earnings. So let's see what he does, what he gets when he does that. Here in the first column, he's got the matching estimates. And in the second, the third column, he's got the regression estimates. So now we see that after service, we actually get a negative effect. So actually enlisting in the military hurts your lifetime earnings. The complete opposite thing we see if we just do the raw difference in means comparison. And the same thing's true for the transition years. And during service, you make a little bit more. These are for, not, for whites. For non-whites, however, we still see positive effects. During service, we get a large $2,100 effect. For transition years, about a $1,000 effect. And then after service, about $800 or $1,000. Okay. Now, the reason these two columns are different is that they're both controlling for variables in certain ways, but they're estimating slightly different average uh, causal effects. So we're getting a little bit different numbers, but they both have the same interpretation. That these are the causal effects under the unconfoundedness assumption, whereas these numbers are not causal. So the main conclusion from just looking at these numbers is that Joining the military hurts your lifetime earnings for whites by, by this much, and for non-whites it helps their lifetime earnings by this much, by about $1,000 after service. So one final thing before walking away and saying that we're done and we know what the causal effects are, let's just double check and make sure that these estimates are actually statistically significant, that we actually have a large enough sample size to conclude that these are real effects. So to do that, we're going to look at the confidence interval. So let's look at the confidence interval for just this number here, minus $197.20. So this here, 70.5, is the estimated standard error. So we can use that to construct a 95% confidence interval, which I've drawn right here. Take our point estimate, $197, minus 1.96 times the standard error, 70.5. Then this upper bound is the same thing, except we add 1.96 times 70.5. Doing the math, we get this confidence interval, minus $335 to minus $59. This interval does not contain zero, so we conclude that this effect, minus $197, is actually real. So those are the main findings of Angrist's study on the effect of military service on lifetime earnings.